Hello, hello, hello. I am joined with Julian. Hello there. And we are going to show you guys four different ways to do topic research slash keyword research. We're going to, we've got one paid version each and also one free version. Um, so I'll let you go first, Julian. Yeah, sure. So I'll start with the paid version. Just going to share my screen one second. Here we go. So one thing that I like to do is just, I try to find keywords where I'm like, how can I guarantee that I'm going to rank, right? So for example, if I'm doing something really competitive like SEO, I'm going to drill down to, to keywords related to SEO that have a KD of maybe zero, something like that, where there's a low DR site ranking, maybe like a DR 30 or less. And we'll try and find results for that. But then additionally, what I like to do is if I find, say, a keyword like this, which I think I'm already ranking for, if, if we put that into Google. But essentially, yeah, so you can see me ranking number three for that keyword. So this method works nicely. So that is part of the, the keyword research. It's just like you can find easy to rank for keywords in literally two seconds by doing this. And you just filter down the main topic, KD zero or less, DR 30 or less ranking in the top 10. But then additionally, just to drill down even further, what I like to do is, is also look at the low DR sites ranking on the first page for that keyword, for example, like this one and this one, DR four and DR zero, and just drill down into what else they're ranking for that potentially I could steal. And it might be the case that actually this site doesn't rank for that many interesting keywords. But as you can see, it's just unlocked a bunch of easy keywords that we know we could rank for. Um, and I know that because if you've got a DR4 at the top of the SERPs there and they're getting traffic, you could probably outrank them for most keywords or at least appear on the same page for a lot of their keywords. So that, that's one method that just works over and over again. It's a bit of a timeless method. And for me, I'm all about productivity. So that's why I think this works really nicely. Yeah, that's that's um that's a good way of doing it. Um, what one other thing as well that you can do on Ahrefs is do like the key the keyword content gap as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, those two, those two methods are probably like my go to. Um, where you're just drilling into different um different styles of websites and seeing which which keywords you can essentially rank for based on like keyword difficulty and stuff. Yeah, exactly. For anyone watching who doesn't know how to do that, so basically what you do is, you know, for example, you can take your website here and then plug in your top three competitors and then hit show keywords and, and you're good to go from there. So you could say, right, show keywords that Fort Lauderdale SEO geek.com ranks for, but Julian Goldie doesn't hit show keywords and it will give you a list of the keywords that I could potentially go for. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I will show my paid version or actually do you know what I'll, I'll go with my free version first um so if i share my screen screen so entire screen um should be able to see it now so all i have done is i've just signed up to a google ads account uh, you don't actually need to spend any money on the google ads all you need to do is go to the keyword planner here and basically it's going to ask you for for a website um so if i do discover new keywords you just plug in a website here um or actually you can do it here and then get results <clears throat> so as you can see one thing i will say about this method it's going to come back with a lot of monetizational style keywords so like service pages right so like no win no fee solicitors medical negligence, diesel claim, medical negligence, solicitors. So these two would actually be the exact same page. Um, one, again, another thing that you could potentially do with this is export all of these keywords, put it into ChatGBT and remove like any duplicates. So you can always go down that um, method as well. But then you've got a lot of different um, high intent pages where people if say for example somebody searching a best of claims right they're probably going to want to look for an actual law firm to hire out um same with like probate solicitors um a lot of these again 
like super high intent um, keywords. And the good thing is it also tells you really accurate search volumes as well. So like no one, no fee solicitors. This is actually Google's data. It's not Ahrefs data. It's not SEMrush or Moz or whatever. So um, you're getting some pretty accurate results. And typically speaking, you can look, at, you can see what um, the difficulty is of a keyword based on the actual um, top of the range um, and high range of the actual cost per click as well. So if something's like, for example, thirty-three pound, so like no win, no fee solicitors, it's going to be a little bit difficult to rank. So you might want to go with something a little bit easier. So for example, Diesel Claim UK. You've got so you've got that at like five pound sixty six, so it's a little bit easier to rank for, um, and potentially you can build like a topical map based off of like diesel claim. So you could do like BMW diesel claim, uh, diesel claim, v, VW diesel claim, Mercedes D, uh, Mercedes Benz diesel claim. So you've got all the different cars as well that you're also covering the topics for as well. So you can build out dedicated pages for those. Um, have you ever used this method, Julian? Not really, no. I don't really use Google Keywords Planner so much. But mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to be said for it. I mean, obviously, the, the data comes straight from Google. is completely free to use. It's based on PPC data. So you know, like, okay, this keyword is something that people actually aspire to rank for because it makes money. Yeah. And one thing that I actually see a lot of our e-commerce clients doing or at LinkedIn agencies They'll test the keyword first with Google Ads, see what converts, and then they're like, oh, if we rank for this keyword, we're going to make money, so we'll invest some backlinks and some content into it. Yeah, I think that's a really smart way of doing it. Yeah, it, it's really good because, again, like SEO, everyone knows that SEO takes time. So it might take, like, for example, some for some bigger keywords, it might take you like a year to rank for that. And imagine if you'd spent a year ranking for a keyword and it doesn't actually generate you any cash. So yeah, it's, it's a really good strategy actually. So let's go on to method number three. All right, all right. So one thing, I guess this is, I've already covered the paid option in terms of doing keyword research. There's a couple of free options that you can do and I'm gonna share with you right now exactly how that works, one second. Do you edit this out, by the way? You cut the gaps? No, I don't. There's just going to be a massive silence. It's just, it's just going to be a massive silence. Everyone's just going to be no staring pressure. at you. No pressure yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. This, is, this is raw footage right now. <laughs> so if you don't want to pay for Ahrefs or whatever, keyword tool, whatever, and you just want to get some free keywords straight off the bat really quickly, you can actually just use a free keyword generator. So for example, I'm in incognito here, so I'm not even logged into Ahrefs or anything like that. And you can just go to the free keyword research tool. And then let's say you're in like the cameras niche, you can type in best cameras, it find keywords, and it will find you a bunch of keywords with the keyword difficulty in like literally 10 seconds. It's like the fastest free way to find keywords that have low competition, right? So for example, best cameras for landscape photography, you can see easy keywords to rank for, didn't cost you anything to pay for that tool. Best cameras for YouTube. Okay, I've got two articles to write today. I'll come back tomorrow when my allowance resets on Ahrefs. And like, you can just rinse and repeat that free keyword research hack over and over and over again if you want. How many times per day can you use that? I can't remember exactly. I think you get, I think you might get like five searches or something like that. I can't oh, remember okay. exactly, but yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Let's try, I mean, for example, if we type in best birds, Yeah, and you can see the longer tail of the keyword and the more rare it is, the lower the KD of the keywords that are going to come back. So ideally, you want to think of a combination of keywords that's going to bring back low competition keywords straight off the bat, right? So if you can get all green, you've won the game. That's like, you know, you've got a bunch of easy keywords straight off the bat in two seconds. The other keyword research hack that you can do for free is basically just try and think of Topics are about to explode, but haven't yet. And I did this recently, uh, sort of late last year, with ChatGPT for link building. 
So if we change to English here, you can see my article ranking at the top and you can see people are searching for, for related keywords to chat GPT for link building. But if you went onto Ahrefs on the paid tool and you're like, how many people are searching for that? It's just going to give you like zero and it's, it's not going to have enough data on the keyword because it's so new. Yeah. But if you Ahrefs does have a lag with that type of Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can find a trending topic, for example, like chat GPT or I don't know, whatever niche you're in and then think ahead and think, okay, what are people going to be searching for in five or six months? You know, a, a really good example of that would be cryptocurrency and looking at what cryptocurrencies are coming out today because you know people are going to search for them in three months, six months, etc. And then you just create the content now and you'll already be in a position where you're ranking and you're ready to take advantage of all the traffic that comes in from it. And it's yeah. free to do it. Yeah. That, that's that's a good tip i like it it's, it's also classed as like information gain as well um so again one of the things that google came out with recently is the helpful content update and one thing that google prefers now is if you are doing information gain so if you have got a website where say for example a new 50 inch television comes on the market and you're the first person to talk about that new 50 inch television google will prefer your website because you're feeding it more data um so let's go into my paid tool so this is keyword chef i'm sure people would have heard of this but i'm using the wild card feature you do have like questions best compare how to most alternatives ideas but the wild card feature is my personal favorite um, because you can do like lawyers for and then star and essentially the star is going to get replaced with um, different variations so once it loads um, you've obviously got like um, let's take a look can a lawyer leave a client can a lawyer represent family in Canada can I apply for the, uh, for a asylum without lawyer so you've got all of these different articles that you can write about um, and again, it, it does a really good job of like covering the topic in its entirety. Um, so like, how do I file for a divorce in Kentucky without a lawyer, right? Some of these articles you will want on your website. And of course, if you are a law firm, you might be thinking, well, I'm not gonna get any inquiries, but we're actually caring more so about the traffic. You wanna come across as the, the topical authority figure. Um, in this space when it comes to lawyers in Kentucky, right? So, <clears throat> for example, I don't actually know the, the entire law about this in, in, in Kentucky, but you might actually come, or, come along in your article and say, no, you do need to hire a lawyer um, to sign off certain documents and stuff. So it's always good to essentially go after some of these articles. And not only that, like what Julian was saying, that these are super long tail articles, right? Um, but you know that they're getting searches because it's come up in the actual, um, in the Google auto suggest. So going after some of these, especially if you are starting off a new website, it's going to help you big time. Um, and it's, it's, it's a strong foundation. Again, not all of these articles will be the money makers like what I showed you with the Google keyword strategy. But if you get, let's say, 50 or 60 of these articles and you start slowly building your website out, you're going to see some serious um, traffic and some serious results in four or five months' time. Yeah, 100%. Plus, you can collect some emails from that, right? And then exactly build, that. build up a list and make money that way too. Yeah. So that has been our four topical map keyword research strategies that we use um anything else to add julian before if we go if you really want to get good at keyword research you wear a headband like this yeah it's going to take you to another level i promise <laughs> it's, it's like jackie chow's creating <laughs> there's, a, there's a correlation for sure yeah do you know what that, that, that's two things that i've seen a lot of you wearing either a bandana or jackie chow just chowing down on some um on some creatine before a video, I, I look at it and I'm like, Jesus, this is this guy. Um, I want to see what his retention rate is like on the video, whether it just drops off at that point or whether it actually spikes up. Yeah, that would be interesting to know that. Actually. I'm, I'm, I might message him after this video. But um, yeah, that's been our video. If you guys do want to get in touch about growing your website, make sure to check out casualdash.com where you can book me out for 15 minutes for free. Cheers.